I'm pretty confident that the Hunter Biden hard drive New York Post article fiasco just ensured that Donald Trump has the 2020 election in the bag. But that doesn't mean that we can just sit idly by and do nothing. As I've said in a few of my other videos, modern U.S. elections are decided by one group, and that is white women. They're the only demographic whose vote swings enough to meaningfully affect the outcome. So we need to share this story and make sure they hear about it and know enough of the facts of the case that they can't help but be convinced that the Biden family is too corrupt to ascend to the heights of power. Briefly, let me go over the relevant history of the Hunter Biden story. Hunter Biden is Joe Biden's son. He was administratively discharged from his service in the Navy in 2014 after failing a drug test for cocaine use. Don't get hung up on the difference between dishonorable discharges and administrative discharges. If you fail a drug test in some branches of the military, it's standard practice to get an administrative discharge, and in some it's a dishonorable discharge. It's just a distinction without a substantive difference. After he got kicked out, his father Joe hooked him up with a job at the United States Department of Commerce. Afterwards, Hunter Biden, Devin Archer, and Christopher Hines, who was the stepson of John Kerry, former Democrat presidential candidate and Secretary of State, founded an investment and advisory firm, Rosemont Seneca. The Burisma Ukraine story is complicated and would take me forever to go through step by step, but here's the Cliff Notes version. Hunter joined the board of a notoriously corrupt natural gas company and was paid upwards of $50,000 a month. We don't know why he was paid that much, he doesn't speak Ukrainian or have any knowledge or expertise with natural gas or the energy industry. I would be shocked if he knew the first thing about the Ukrainian legal system. If he ever even bothered to attend board meetings, we haven't heard about it. Because Joe Biden was point man for the Obama White House in the country of Ukraine in 2015, acting deputy chief of mission at the U.S. Embassy in Kiev, George Kent, raised concerns to officials in Joe Biden's office about the perception of conflict of interest. Joe Biden even bragged publicly that he withheld billions of U.S. aid dollars to the country of Ukraine in the midst of a hot war they were waging against Russia until their government fired a Ukrainian prosecutor who was investigating Burisma. They said, you have no authority. You're not the president. The president said, I said, call him. <laughs> I said, I'm telling you, you're not getting a billion dollars. I said, you're not getting the billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> Got fired. And they put in place someone who was solid. So what else did Hunter Biden conceivably have to offer this Burisma company, if not access and influence with his vice president father, who is now running for president? Not a goddamn thing. This is graft and corruption on its face. And I didn't even go into the money Hunter's firm received from the widow of the ex-mayor of Moscow or the dubious Chinese money that we now know about. Recently, Donald Trump's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, released to the New York Post tabloid the contents of a copy of a hard drive which included several photos of Hunter engaging in illegal drug use, smoking crack or meth, and incriminating emails which appear to indicate not only that this pay-for-play scheme Hunter engaged in has been a regular practice for members of this family for years, but that Joe Biden knew about it from the beginning and had been receiving hundreds of thousands of dollars of this ill-gotten money. To quote Hunter Biden to his sister in one of those emails, but don't worry, unlike Pop, I won't make you give me half your salary, unquote. So, to clarify, it looks as though Joe Biden has used his power and influence for years to get his family members into lucrative jobs that they are completely unqualified for and are sometimes not doing any actual work for. They just have the job title on paper. And then in return for him getting his family these no-show jobs, his family pays Joe half of what they make doing them. It's been well publicized that Hunter has had a long history of drug use and relapses. In 1988, Hunter was arrested on the Jersey Shore on drug possession charges. His record was expunged at the time when his father was pushing for incarceration of drug offenders in the 1994 Omnibus Anti-Crime Bill, which Joe Biden authored, which mandated harsher sentences for crack cocaine than users caught with powdered cocaine, which the left has never shut up about since because of the racial disparity in black and white groups' cocaine usage habits. Hunter was listed as a customer of Ashley Madison when the pro-adultery site was hacked in 2015. In 2016, in Arizona, Hunter returned a rental car with a Delaware Attorney General badge, U.S. Secret Service business cards, two IDs belonging to Hunter Biden, a used crack pipe, cocaine residue, and a small amount of white powder in it. 
Shockingly, the county and city attorneys declined to prosecute Hunter Biden. He separated from his wife, who publicly accused him of spending money on drugs and prostitutes in 2017, and later dated the widow of his deceased brother, Beau Biden. In June 2019, Hunter Biden was sued for paternity by Arkansas stripper London Alexis Roberts, where a DNA test proved that Hunter was indeed the father of her child. And Hunter has had numerous days in rehabilitation centers over the years. Now, I know that it's salacious and a bit of fun for Republicans to share photos and talk about the crazy fucked up things Hunter has done that are embarrassing for his father. If a politician has a kid that's embarrassing in some way, it's fun to paint the politician as a bad father and smear their political ideology in the process. It is fun, but also pretty cheap and mean-spirited, if we're being honest. Sometimes, despite the best efforts of a parent, their kid is just a shit or has insurmountable biology making them the plaything of their addiction. I'm certainly not making this video just to embarrass people who clearly have issues. It feels gross even having to bring these things up. But I'll do it, not because I think the ends of Trump winning the election justify the means, but because Hunter's character and history clearly show that he had no business whatsoever getting or holding any of the jobs he was given, no business making that amount of money, and absent any evidence to the contrary other than Joe Biden's pathetic non-answers to every question he's been asked about his son, we are left with no conceivable alternative than to accept the evidence of the Biden's family massive corruption. To briefly go through the New York Post story, a laptop repair store owner is on record saying that a man he visually identified as Hunter Biden brought in some computer parts, signed a form contract that stated that if no payment for repair work was given, the property left at his repair shop would become the store owner's after 90 days. And then Hunter never paid nor returned to pick up his property. The electronic store owner then looked into the contents of what was now his property and found numerous examples of what he believed to be proof of criminal activity on Hunter's part. So then the store owner contacted the FBI and turned the hard drive over to them. The store owner also made several copies of the contents of the hard drive and sent them to friends to release to the media in case the store owner turned up missing or was found murdered. After waiting several months and not having heard that the FBI released the contents of the hard drive to anyone, and seeing the Trump impeachment hearing where no mention of his evidence was provided, the store owner reached out to Rudy Giuliani's lawyer. Giuliani's lawyer, Giuliani himself, and the New York Post all independently corroborated the information as legitimate. And here we are. Rudy Giuliani seems to be teasing more revelations from the hard drive are forthcoming in the last few weeks prior to the election. This seems like a smart strategy since if the Bidens or other parties come out trying to discredit the new evidence, Giuliani and Trump can try to catch them in lies by holding their cards close to the vest. And the optics of Biden's team not coming out strongly denying this story in the meantime looks terrible. Giuliani's strategy reminds me of the point in every courtroom drama movie where the prosecution knows that through some technicality they don't quite have enough evidence to prove the defendant guilty, but they put them on the stand to try to get them to incriminate themselves. But how do we ensure this story gets to the voters relevant to ensure Trump's victory in the election? After all, both Facebook and Twitter actively jumped on trying to prevent the New York Post article from being shared on their platforms just hours after it came to print. The companies were vague about which rules of service the New York Post violated in their article, but it appeared the company's story is that the article contained hacked materials. But as I laid out in my explanation of how the New York Post obtained the contents of the hard drive, there was no hacking. The laptop repair shop owner owned the hard drive at the time. It was his property. If Facebook and Twitter jumped the gun believing that the information came from a hack, well, fine, but it is curious that those companies don't have a great track record of trying to block other obviously hacked or illegally leaked information, such as Trump's alleged tax returns. Alternatively, Twitter took down the New York Post's entire Twitter page, in addition to just blocking the spread of their one article. So I believe this is just the leftists in Silicon Valley revealing their true colors. They don't even believe this stuff came from a hack. They are the hacks. They want to interfere with the election because they hate Trump. And that would be fine, but you have to be upfront with your customers if that's the case. None of this, we're just a platform, not a publisher, you can't sue us for misinformation and libel bullshit anymore. 
So again, how do we ensure enough white ladies hear about this story and are forced to come to terms with the evidence that the mean orange man's opponent is crooked as shit? Well, sharing this video is a nice start, but share Rudy Giuliani's YouTube videos and podcasts too. Bombard your Facebook, Twitter, whatever, with everything you can find about this story. Watch and share the hearings that Mark Zuckerberg and Jack Dorsey from Twitter are going to be brought to to answer for their censorship. And the GOP has reached out to the FBI and formally asked why, if they had this laptop, did no one ever come forward with it as either Russian counterintelligence or as legitimate evidence vindicating Donald Trump during his impeachment hearings? If we ever hear back from the FBI, share that too. I want you to become fucking obnoxious about this story, because as it stands right now, this is the best shot Trump has. And Biden won't give a serious answer to any of this until he's forced to by the story being so widespread and the optics being so damning for him that he has no other choice. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? <laughs> the shadow knows. Hi guys, Media Shadow here. I'm trying to grow the channel and hopefully get more than one video out a week. So if you like what you've seen, please give me a like, subscribe, share, or drop me some coin on Patreon. I've left a link in the description of the video. Thanks!